Uh, thanks very much. Um, I'm representing uh, a group, a team of people working on physical activity um, and uh, public health in South Africa. And my colleagues and I, I wanted to bring forward the idea of the perhaps the absence of discussion around the WHO Global Strategy on Diet and Activity for Health. And so we wanted to give some examples of how the global strategy, the WHO Global Strategy, has actually moved the agenda forward, we believe, in countries, particularly developing countries such as South Africa. And this were, these were conclusions from a meeting, the WHO meeting, um, earlier this uh, last year in October uh, from a colleague, Adrian Bauman, uh, who compiled data on developing countries and suggested that the evidence from developing countries was in fact similar to those of developed countries and that the burden of disease globally was sufficient, that it was time for physical inactivity to be taken seriously as a global risk factor and that the global strategy actually provided us with a mandate for working with government and moving forward and provides a framework for national action. And so just to give you a context of that, if you like, sorry, my animation seems to have stuck. Okay. Um, in this context, there are certain apparent essential prerequisites to actually getting physical activity on the health agenda, particularly in developing countries. And firstly, that's a high level of political commitment and guiding policy. And physical activity, even in this program, has some been lost in various agendas and between departments. Funding is always an issue. And, uh, and support from stakeholders and the need for a coordinating team. But in a setting of developing countries, you usually need a credible local or national institution which provides leadership and actually guides government. There's a need for a clear message or an identifiable slogan. And it's easier to link it to NCD policy or an existing campaign. Specifically, the, the political environment is much more volatile, well, perhaps, in developing countries, and therefore you need someone to navigate that. And essentially, you also need a convincer document, something that's really easy for people to understand in different government sectors to be used for advocacy. And communication is a key factor. And in a particularly in developing country settings, opportunistic behavior, being opportunistic and actually looking for top-down and bottom-up approaches. Um, and then finally, empowering sectors outside the health sector, which will actually help to develop partnerships, essentially capacity development, and specifically using the cultural context and the diversity of cultural context actually to your favor um, in creating supportive environments. We use the WHO CDC framework within South Africa. We had a vision that we wanted to increase physical activity levels in South Africa. The WHO gave us a mandate in terms of global advocacy. We define the problem locally by assisting with government in terms of developing national surveillance. And WHO, again, with the STEP surveillance program, provided some aspects there. Broad consultation needs to take place, and NGO and governments need to partner. And I'm, I'm speaking to the converted here, but just to give you some indication that for the first time in 2003, we have national surveillance, and more than 60% apparently of South African men and nearly 50% of South African women are insufficiently active for health. So we've got a case for government. And that has led to physical activity being very uh, clearly identified with the government's healthy lifestyle campaign, and we have a positive, positive political climate. And that led to the VUCA South Africa movement, which was launched in October of 2004, along with the Healthy Lifestyles Campaign, and culminated in various initiatives throughout 2005 and 2006 and activities in all nine provinces through health promotion. We have partner organizations in Move for Health. And in fact, and I'm going to move on because of time, and again, the animation is letting me down. This has also led to other initiatives. I don't know where it's gone. It's also led to other initiatives, for example, our youth charter movement, a fitness and wellness charter with over 200 stakeholder organizations and over 1,000 signatories. So we've taken this global strategy and we've actually partnered with government, we've partnered with the private sector and NGOs. We have a top-down and we have a bottom-up approach. So the youth fitness and wellness charter uh, ensures physical activity is a right, not a privilege for children. And in fact, we also have initiatives at the bottom-up approach in community development. And in that case, CAPCOD has been essential to actually capacity development, protocol development, and we're busy implementing CAPCOD-based protocols in South Africa. Thanks very much. Thank you.